The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 50 of your distance learning program for geology from 4 with neighbor Simplice Che. To continue with this lesson, we look at correction of assignment from lesson 49. And we have three. The first, which was to define sedimentary rocks and sediments. Next, with the aid of example, outline the origin of sedimentary rocks. And three, differentiate between sedimentation and sedimentology. So the first part of the question, we are to define sedimentary rock and sediment. And uh, second, with the aid of example, we outline the origin of sedimentary rock. And the third, differentiate between sedimentation and sedimentology. So we will start with the first one. Sedimentary rocks are rocks formed from gradual deposition and hardening of sediments. Or they are rocks formed from the compaction and cementation of loose sediments. Sediments are materials derived from pre-existing rocks through denudation and deposition in low-lying environment by denudational agents like water, wind, glacier, gravity. And so, sediments are formed when we have weathering, erosion, transportation, and deposition. It is only after deposition that we call them sediment. So when they are weathered, we call them weathered materials. When they are eroded, we still call them weathered materials. When they are being transported, we call them weathered materials. Now when they are deposited in low-lying environments like lakes, like seas and oceans, like swamps, we now call them sediments. The second part of the assignment was to give the origin of sedimentary rocks. And sedimentary rocks have four origins. The first one, from pre-existing rock fragments. Second, from fragments of dead animals. Third, from precipitation of ions in solution. And fourth, from organic debris such as leaves and roots. So based on this, we can have equally four groups of sedimentary rocks. When it is from pre-existing rock fragments, we call them digital or clastic sedimentary rocks. When it is from dead animals or fragments of dead animals like shells, teeth and bones, we call them biochemical sedimentary rocks. When they originate from precipitation of ions in solution, we call them chemical sedimentary rocks. And when they originate from organic debris such as decaying leaves, roots and stems, we call them organic sedimentary rocks. The third part of the assignment is differentiate between sedimentation and sedimentology. Sedimentation is the process of formation of sediments. Or you can equally define it as the gradual settling of sediments when the velocity of the transporting agent reduces. Meanwhile, sedimentology is the study of the processes of formation 
of sedimentary rocks. Their composition, texture, structure, fasci type, and environment of formation. So it studies the processes that lead to the formation of sedimentary rocks, the composition of sedimentary rocks, the textures and structures of sedimentary rocks, the fasci type and environment of formation of sedimentary rocks. So that is how you had to follow our assignment. <laughs> So we are still under sedimentary processes and we have looked at origin and nature of sedimentary rocks in lesson 49. And under sedimentary processes, we still have to look at stages and conditions of formation of sedimentary rocks, lithification and diagenesis. And so our lesson 50 is titled Stages and Conditions of Formation of sedimentary rocks. To better apprehend this lesson, we shall follow this plan. We we'll begin with lesson objectives. What you are supposed to grab at the end of this lesson. What you are supposed to master at the end of lesson 50. The requisites, which are the previous knowledge that you need to better your understanding of lesson 50. Real life situation. Hypothesis, we move to learning activities, record of what we shall see in this lesson 50, application exercises to test your understanding of this lesson, and we shall crown it with an assignment. At the end of this lesson, you are supposed to list and describe the different types or the different stages and conditions of formation of sedimentary rocks. Take note. List, describe the different stages and conditions of formation of sedimentary rocks. For previous knowledge, you need knowledge from mass wasting, which is the movement of materials downslope under the influence of gravity, causes and types of mass wasting, knowledge from weathering and erosion, knowledge from agents and processes of erosion. For the real life situation, rocks are uplifted to the continent. They are weathered, eroded, transported and deposited in sedimentary environments where they are later transformed to sedimentary rocks. This is a single circle. But the scientific problem behind is, why are there so many sedimentary rocks in nature? Why should there be so many sedimentary rocks when we have a single circle that leads to the formation of sedimentary rocks? We bring out the following hypothesis. The first, maybe it's as a result of denudation. The second, it might be equally as a result of sedimentation or diagenesis, or as well, it could be lithification. We shall see this better at the end of this lesson. For the learning activities, we are going to be looking at stages of formation of sedimentary rocks, and of course, conditions for formation of sedimentary rocks. We begin with the stages of formation of sedimentary rocks. Observe this picture. It is a diagram showing a slope that enters into the sea. And on the slope, we have a number of activities, number one, two, three, four, and five. Look at their positions. Number one is at the top of a, or at the top of a slope. Number two is getting to the middle. Number three is getting to the base of the slope. Number four is inside the ocean. And number five is below the ocean. So take note of their positions. And up, there is a diagram showing you that number one is weathering. Number two, erosion. Number three, transportation. Number four, deposition. Number five, litification. And therefore, this is a diagram 
that summarizes the stages of formation of sedimentary rocks. Therefore, we can now say that the stages of sedimentary rocks are grouped into weathering, erosion, transportation, deposition, and preservation, and of course, diagenesis and litification. Take note equally that this is the order for sedimentary rocks to be formed. It begins with weathering, next erosion, goes to transportation, deposition and preservation, diagenesis and litification. Let us look at them. We begin with weathering. Weathering is the gradual loosening of rocks at the surface or subsurface with little or no movement. Now, when rocks are formed within the earth crust, they are stable under the temperature and pressure conditions under which they were formed. When these rocks are exposed to the surface, they meet new climatic conditions like low temperatures and low pressures. As a result, they become unstable and are broken down into smaller fragments. Example is in this picture, this is a rock, granitic rock, that was formerly buried within the earth crust. And as it was buried, lithostatic pressure was acting on this rock. As a result, the rock was not fragmented. But when this rock was exposed to the surface, the pressure from overlying material was removed. That is why the rock turned now to develop horizontal joints, and those horizontal joints were exploited by denudational agents forming this kind of a structure known as a tall. This other one is a rock equally that was formerly buried, shielded from sunlight. But when it was exposed at the surface, since rocks are poor conductors of heat, only the outermost surface was receiving heat during sunny days and expanding, and of course, losing heat during cold nights and contracting. So a multiple process of expansion and contraction led to the development of stress and peeling off of these rocks in form of scales of fishes or onion peeling, a process known as exfoliation that we have seen. We go to the next stage, erosion. Erosion is the mobilization and displacement of weathered materials aided by agents like water, wind, ice, wave, and gravity. And of course, gravity is the main engine because it moves from high altitude areas to low altitude areas. So weathering is there to break down the rock, bring it into smaller fragments. Erosion now mobilize, remove, and displace these weathered fragments. After erosion, what comes next is transportation. And this is the movement of weathered materials over very long distances aided by water, wind, ice, and waves. And of course, from high altitude environments like hills, mountains, to low altitude environments like plains, lakes, seas, and oceans. The next is deposition. After transportation, there is deposition. And deposition is the gradual settling or local accumulation of transported materials in different sedimentary environments. The sedimentary environments could be in the desert, in the sea, in the oceans, in lakes, or in marshy environments, low altitude environments. And deposition is made possible when the velocity of the transporting agent reduces. When water or wind is transporting sediments, when the velocity of this transporting agent reduces, it no longer has the force to transport the material. As a result, it drops the material. And this process of settling or dropping material is known as deposition. After deposition, we have preservation. This is the storage and conservation of sediments from being moved from environments where they were deposited. After preservation, we have diagenesis. And diagenesis is defined as the sum total of all the chemical, physical, 
biological and inorganic processes occurring on sediments after deposition. What you are supposed to note here is that diagenesis occur on sediments after deposition. Take note, after deposition. So it is the sum total of all the chemical, physical, inorganic, and biological processes occurring on sediments after deposition. And then the last stage, or the last stage of formation of sedimentary rock is litification, which is a process that converts loose sediments into a consolidated rock. So the stages of formation of sedimentary rocks, we have seen weathering. After weathering, it moves to erosion. After erosion, transportation. After transportation, deposition. After deposition, preservation. After preservation, diagenesis. And after diagenesis, we have litification. These are the stages of formation of sedimentary rocks in order. I begin. It begins with weathering, erosion, transportation, deposition, preservation, diagenesis, and litification. Those are the stages of formation of sedimentary rocks. Let us look now at the conditions for formation of sedimentary rocks. For a sedimentary rock to be formed, a parent rock must be weathered, transported, deposited, and buried, and then hardened into a coherent rock. So there must be weathering, transportation, deposition, burial, and hardening. The composition, therefore, of a sedimentary rock will depend on the following conditions. One, the nature of the parent rock. Two, the type of weathering. Three, the mode and distance of transportation. And four, the environment of deposition and accumulation. Take note. From the conditions of formation of sedimentary rocks, we can determine the composition of sedimentary rocks. And that will depend on the nature of the parent rock, the type of weathering, the mode and distance of transportation, the environment of deposition and accumulation. Let us begin with nature of the parent rock and see how the nature of the parent rock can change the composition or can condition the composition of a sedimentary rock. If the parent rock is a basic igneous rock like granite or gab like basalt, I beg your pardon, or gabbro, most of the basic elements will be dissolved by water and leach out. And equally, these basic rocks are composed of less resistant minerals like olivine, which are easily transformed to clay minerals. And so, if the parent rock is composed of uh, basic igneous rocks like basalt and gabbro, the type of sedimentary rock that will be formed will be clay, and the composition of the sedimentary rock form will be different from the composition of the original parent rock. That is how a basic igneous rock, uh, sedimentary rocks can be formed from basic igneous rock. You see that the composition already changes, the grain size changes, and of course, even the volume of the rock changes. Now, if the parent rock is an acid igneous rock with resistant minerals like quartz and autoclase, which are hardly transformed to other minerals but crumble into smaller fragments, will lead to the formation of sand and sandstones. So they will lead to formation of sedimentary rocks having compositions almost similar to that of the parent rock. So this is how the parent rock can condition the composition of a sedimentary rock. We go to the type of weathering. Of course, Chemical weathering will lead to a change in the composition of the weathered products. And so if chemical weathering has taken place, of course, bowel, chemical, and chemical sedimentary rocks will be formed. 
Remember that chemical sedimentary rocks are those formed from precipitation of ions in solution. And one type of chemical weathering is dissolution, where soluble elements are dissolved in rocks and leached out. And these elements can end up in the ocean, where they precipitate to give chemical sedimentary rocks, or where they precipitate in shells of organisms. And when these organisms die, they, their shells are welded together to give biochemical sedimentary rocks. Now, if the type of weathering is physical weathering, the parent rock will simply be broken down into smaller fragments called clasts. And this type of sedimentary, and it will be welded together to give clastic sedimentary rocks or detrital sedimentary rocks. So that is how the type of weathering can condition the composition of sedimentary rocks. We go to the next, the mode and distance of transportation. Under the mode of transportation, we look at the edges and the distance. Now, if sediments are transported by wind, water, and wave, the distance of transportation will be long. As a result, the grains will reduce in size, the grains will be well-shaped, that is, almost rounded. And so, when sediments are transported for long, they have fine grain and rounded grains. On the contrary, if they are transported by gravity and glacier, and these agents generally do not transport sediments for long distances, the sediments will be angular and will be coarse. So this is how the mode and distance of transportation can condition the composition and type of sedimentary rocks to be formed. The environment of deposition, which is the last environment of deposition and accumulation, the environment of deposition can be in the desert, it can be a continental environment, either at the foot of mountains, in marshy environments, in brackish uh, uh, environments like lakes. Equally, it can equally be in transitional environments like deltas and lagoons. Now, based on this environment, different types of sedimentary rocks can be formed. For example, in brackish environment where we have saline lakes, evaporites can be formed as a result of precipitation of salt. So these are the uh, factors that condition the composition of sedimentary rocks. We have talked of type of uh, the parent rock, the composition of the parent rock, the type of weathering, the mode and distance of transportation, and of course, the environment of deposition and accumulation. Recall, therefore, that stages of formation of sedimentary rocks begins with weathering, erosion, transportation, deposition and preservation, diagenesis and litification. And take note equally that diagenesis only comes after deposition. There are processes occurring on sediments after deposition. And litification now converts loose sediments into a coherent rock. The conditions for formation of sedimentary rocks include welding of pre-existing rocks, transportation of weathered materials, depositional environment, diagenetic processes. These are the conditions for formation of sedimentary rocks. And these equally condition the type of uh, the type and the composition of sedimentary rocks to be formed. With this, we are going to look at some application exercises. We begin with exercise number one. Select from the list below the correct order of sedimentary processes. Select from the list below the correct order of sedimentary processes. A. Weldry transportation, erosion, and deposition. B, weathering, transportation, erosion, and diagenesis. C, weathering, erosion, transportation, deposition, and diagenesis. And D, erosion, weathering, and diagenesis. 
from the lesson, you can see that our answer is C, where the stages of uh, formation of sedimentary rocks begin with weathering, erosion, transportation, deposition, diagenesis, and litification. Exercise number two. The sum total of all activities acting on sediments after deposition is best described as the sum total of all activities acting on sediments after deposition is best described as A. Diagenesis B. Depositional activities C. Storage and accumulation D. Compaction And our correct answer there is A. Diagenesis Remember we define diagenesis as the sum total of all the physical, chemical, inorganic and biological processes acting on sediments after deposition. Exercise number three. What will determine the shape of grains in a sedimentary rock? What will determine the shape of grains in a sedimentary rock? A. Weathering and erosion. B. Distance and type of transportation. C. Diagenesis and litification. And our correct answer for this question is B. Distance and type of transportation. Because the longer the distance, the, the finer the grains will be and the grains will be rounded. So, Sediments that are not transported for long distances are coarse and angular, while those that are transported for long distances are fine and rounded. Exercise number four. What will cause deposition of sediments? What will cause deposition of sediments? A. Size of the grains. B. Type of transporting agent. C drop in velocity of transporting agent, and D, environment of deposition. And our correct answer is C, drop in velocity of transporting agent. As assignment, you are going to list and describe three stages of formation of sedimentary rocks. And the second one, what will condition the type of sedimentary rock to be formed. To further understand lesson 50, you read the following references. With this, we have come to an end of our lesson 50, and our next lesson will be on diagenesis and litification. <laughs> Ona tege minga matege nyum Ona tege majang matege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen Ngani bana matege mot Ngani lakiri watege ndong Eso kina bia dinkido Mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninyane njubia yen 